In our previous video, we took a linear equation like this one, and we completed a bunch of ordered pairs so that they would be solutions to that equation. And then we use those ordered pairs to graph the equation. Remember, the act of graphing that equation is to graph the line that represents all solutions of that equation. And so we're being asked to do the same thing here. We're being asked to graph this equation. However, we're not given any incomplete ordered pairs to start with. But understand that's OK, because we can choose the x and the y values to put as half of the ordered pair and then go ahead and find the other variable from there. So we can choose that. And so what we're going to look at here is how to choose those values of x or y wisely. Now, in this particular example, I would suggest making the x the thing that you pick first. And the reason for that is because y is already by itself. So once we pick an x value, we can just plug it in here and figure out what y should be to go with it. And you can set up ordered pairs if you like, but remember, that's the same as setting up a table. I kind of like to set up tables when I have to come up with the x and y values on my own. And then the other thing I want to think about when I am deciding what x values to choose is that I would like to have kind of the entire coordinate grid covered by points. So in other words, I want I want some I want at least one point over in the negative x territory over here and I want at least one over here in the positive x territory just so that I can be accurate on uh, throughout the entire grid. So um, let's start just dead center because picking x equals 0 is often one of the easiest points to find. So, um, so I'll pick x equals 0 and we'll just figure out what that equals. Well, 1 third times 0 minus 1 just equals negative 1. So that means that 0, negative 1 is a point on this line. And so I'll go to 0 and then down to negative 1. Okay, now let's pick an x value in negative territory. But let's be smart about what we pick. If I picked, for example, x equals negative 2, then I would end up with 1 third times negative 2, which is negative 2 thirds, and then I would subtract 1, and I would end up with y equals negative 5 thirds after I did all that arithmetic. Now, negative 5 thirds is correct for the y value, but it's also not easy to find on the graph. If we can help it, we always want to have integer values for x and y, and that'll help us to be more accurate. So what I'm going to do is understand that if I put in an x value that's divisible by 3, then that number and the 3 will have a common factor of 3, and so this 3 in the denominator will cancel out. So let's think about x values that are divisible by 3. Well, I think negative 6 is a pretty good choice. Because if I put in 1 third times negative 6, minus 1, I get negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. So I can go over here to negative 6, and then negative 3 in the y direction. Now at this point I have two points, and there is only one line that goes through any two points. But we always want to find at least three points. And the reason for that is if I made a mistake in finding one of these two points, at this point I wouldn't know it. However, if I get one more point and it does not seem to lie in a line with the other two, then I know somewhere a mistake's been made. So that would alert me to that fact and make me go back and check my work. So we're always going to find at least three points. So let's uh, plug in another x value that is divisible by 3, so that when I multiply it by 1 third, I get an integer. Um, this time, let's do, let's do 9. So 1 third times 9 
minus one equals one third times nine is three. That equals two. So all the way over here at x equals nine, then up two. And it certainly seems like these three points all lie in a line, and so I can feel pretty confident about what I've done. And so I have, let me just go ahead and list these points out. I forgot to do that. So here's three solutions, but if I connect them up with a line, that will visually represent all solutions. To that equation. I'm sorry, I got a little wobbly right here, but use your imagination and pretend it's really good. All right. So this line, understand that just having the points on the graph is not enough. This line is the graph of our equation y equals one third x minus one. Okay. And so remember always graph at least three points and then connect them up with a line.